that I think you're pretty good on um, the two-step equation, word problems, right? So now it's time to kind of bump it up to this. And in order for us to kind of go over multi-step equations, I'm going to teach it to you in reference to perimeter. It's a giant R, but perimeter. All right, we're going to talk about triangles, rectangles, and squares. Okay, those are kind of our three main shapes. So don't forget, multi-step equations usually involve what two operations? It requires some distributing, and it requires some combining of like terms, right? Okay? All right? So we're going to set up some equations that are going to have some distributing and some combining in them. So um, I don't know if you know, when you deal with triangles, they refer to the side lengths as A, B, and C. Okay? So the perimeter for a triangle is just adding the, all the sides up. It's A plus B plus C. It doesn't get much simpler than that, right? Okay? So if I were to give you a triangle, and if I were to give you the side lengths of two of the sides, and, and ask you to find the perimeter, be careful, I'm not asking you to find X. If I were to say find the perimeter of this, you can't really give me a number answer because you don't know what X is. But could I represent the perimeter as an expression? Yeah. I would just say perimeter would be that one side plus the other side plus the side we don't know. Okay, so Ms. Z, the perimeter of this is 20 plus X. And you'd have to leave it like that because I didn't tell you what X is or I didn't tell you the perimeter. Yeah. Can I use the yes. Um, that only works on right triangles. Yeah, Pythagorean. Yes, that's exactly what it is. But it only works on right triangles. Good. Okay. So right now we're just adding the sides up. For a rectangle, they don't use A, B, and C. They use L and W, right? And there are a couple different kinds of formulas that you could use to find the perimeter of a rectangle. The very, very basic one would be take the length and add it to the width and take the other length and add it to the other width. And that's very elementary and very basic, right? So we're probably not going to use that one. We're going to use a more sophisticated one. And either one of these next two will work. So some people say, well, there are two lengths. And I add that. To those two lengths to the two widths. Okay, that's a formula we've seen before, right? Or a more even sophisticated version uses the distributive property and kind of pulls that two out and says, well, I'm just going to take the length and the width and add them together. And there are what? Two of them. These two and those two, all right? Either one of those equations will work. I want you to focus on using one of these two and not having to do that, right? So triangles use A, B, and C. Rectangles use L and W. So if I were to ask you to find the perimeter of this rectangle, got to get a little fancy, it would mean I have two of these and two of these, so I would say I have two side lengths that are x plus 5, and I'm going to add that to the two side lengths that are each 3x. And I, and I can't give you a number answer right now. I didn't tell you the perimeter. I didn't tell you what x is. So you're going to have a 2x plus 10 plus a 6x, okay? Yeah, I know. I, ri I miscopied something. What did I do? Oh, okay, that's what I was going to say. I, I had the two in there. So thank you. So this is going to be 4x. Talking too fast. So this is going to be 4x. And I knew something was up because I knew I was supposed to have 10x here. So 10x plus 10. So write an expression that represents the perimeter of this rectangle. Man, that's a lot of math vocab in there. Did you follow it? Right. It was pretty simple. Okay. So what we're going to do next is... Instead of asking you to find the perimeter, I'm going to give you the perimeter. And if I give you the perimeter, then I'm going to ask you to find x, right? 
So if I go back to this first example and say, all right, all right, I'll tell you right now that this side is 8 and this is 12 and this is x, and the whole perimeter is 33. Now do you have enough information to find x? You sure do. You just have to take your 8 plus your 12 plus your x and set it equal to the perimeter and solve a multi-step equation. You combine like terms. And now you just subtract 20. And you find out that the side length was 13. OK? And then 8 plus 12 plus 13 should add to 33, and it does. You with me? So if I were to do the same thing down here and say, hey, I have a rectangle. I'll move that up in a second. I have a rectangle with side lengths of 3x and 2x plus 5. And the whole perimeter of this rectangle is 120. Find x. Don't find the perimeter. I gave it to you. Use the perimeter to find what the value of x is. All that means is now I take this and set it equal to 120. And I distribute. And I combine. And I solve. Those three things. Distribute, combine, solve. Okay, so we take it from a multi-step equation down to a two-step equation, down to a one-step equation, to an answer. Awesome, you followed it. The value of x is 11. Good? You with me? Okay, so now let's apply that to this next problem. Be yeah, because this next problem is going to get a little bit tricky, okay? So, Daniel, I have this for you right here. I'll give you that in a second. So, for multi-step problems, for your word problems, it's going to say find x. Don't find the perimeter. All right. I'm going to try to pull a fast one on you. Be careful. This side length is 10 times x minus 1 feet. This side length is 4x feet. These side lengths are given in feet. And this one is x plus 4 feet. Looks kind of crazy. And the whole perimeter is 288 inches. Ooh. And if you're not paying attention, you're probably going to start to set all these equal to each other and make, or add all these up and have it equal to 88. And you're not going to get the right answer. Because the side lengths are given in what? What unit? Feet. But your perimeter is given in? Inches. inches. So you have a little bit of converting to do before you can even start the problem. You basically have to know how many feet is 288 inches, and what is that conversion factor? It's, yes, it's 12, but it does give you an answer of 24 feet. So now that I have the right information, we can start our problem. So if I were to say, I'm going to take this side length and add it to this side length and add it to this side length, and after I do a whole bunch of distributing and combining, the perimeter works out to be 24. If you put 28, the process will be right, but the, the information that you use will be wrong. Okay, so do you see why this is just a multi-step? This is like 3-3, three, because three, there's a whole bunch going on on one side, and then just that itty-bitty number on the left. So you're going to distribute and combine. x plus 4 plus 4x plus 10x minus 10. All I did was distribute. Now let's combine. I have 1x here, 4x is here, 10x is here, and then I have four positive coefficients and 10 negative coefficients, that's going to give me a combined answer of 15 x's total and six negatives. And I took that multi-step equation down to a two-step equation, and we are home free, right? Once you get it here, you know what to do. Okay, what's that? Nope, four plus one is five plus 10. 15 x equals 30. Divide both sides by 15. The value of x is 2. That's what they asked you to find.
Did you follow that? Okay. So I didn't ask you to find the perimeter. I asked you to find x. Would you like to try the rectangle one on your own? I know you'd love to, so go for it. So here is a rectangle. It has side lengths of x plus 3 meters and 2x minus 6 meters. And the perimeter of this rectangle is 2,600 centimeters. What? So this is America, and in America, we do not use the metric system, even though the whole rest of the world uses the metric system because it makes sense. It's based off of base 10, right? So how many centimeters are in a meter? Anybody know? 100. This is a meter stick, OK? If you look closely on this meter stick, you will see that there are 100 centimeters. So I can't set this all up and make it equal to 2,600. I have to convert. So just like I divided by my 12 up here, what should I divide by here? 100, because there's 100 centimeters in every meter, which gives you what? Move it two to the left, 26. OK? Yeah, go ahead. Why is x plus 3 in parentheses? It doesn't, I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's just because okay. it looked like, um, I didn't want you to think that it was 6m. So I should have put it there. So now you're taking, be careful, go back and look which one of these perimeter formulas would work best. So I'm going to give you a second to try to work through that. And I should say up here, find x. You don't need to find the perimeter because the perimeter was given. So go for it. Find, find x. Find the value of that, what that number should be right there. If I plug it in here, plug it in here, add all four up, it should equal 26. how we set it up. This one will not go evenly. So if you did not get an even number, don't think you did something wrong. Remember, it's algebra. It's not always going to be unicorns and rainbows and whole numbers. Turn your phone off, please. So x is actually going to be equal to 5 and 1 third. Anybody get that? Or you didn't maybe have time to finish? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. See, if you forgot to do that too, that's part of your formula, right? Because if you forgot to do that, then you only found the perimeter for half of the rectangle. But if you forgot to do that and you got so far down, could you at one point just take that and multiply that by two? Do you see what I mean? You didn't have to go back and start over. You could have just done it that way, OK? All right, so do we understand the application problems for the multi-step equations? OK, because now we're going to move on to the second part, which was variables on both sides. OK, so I want you to just write this at the top. We're still going. Daniel, I got these notes for you. Variables on both sides, right? That is going to be a huge hint for you, because in a minute, I'm going to ask you to think outside the box and see if you can come up with something that hardly anybody today has been able to do. So. Triangles use A, B, and C for side lengths. Um, rectangles use L and W. Does anybody know what they use for square? It's one of the first shapes we learn when we're like two. And what do we know about it? Everything's the same. The side lengths are the same. The interior angles are the same. Everything's the same. So all you need to know about a square 
is S. And I only need to give you one of them. Because if that's S, then what's that? S, S, S. If that's seven, what's that? Seven, seven and seven and seven. Got it? So what would the perimeter of a square be in terms of formula? Four S. Agreed? If I know what one of the side lengths is, don't I just multiply it by four because there's four of them? So the perimeter for the, or the um, formula for perimeter of a square is just 4s. Agreed? Okay. So if I ask you, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to ask you to find x for these. I'm going to actually ask you to find the perimeter. Okay. So if I give you a square, and first of all, in order for this to work, the directions have to come out and say, find the perimeter of this square, okay? Meaning you, have to, you can't just assume that it's a square. Even if it looks like one, they have to say, find the perimeter of the square. This side length is 6x, and this side length is 8x minus 10. And as you're writing this, I know probably what you're thinking. Well, I thought she said it had to be the same. 6x doesn't equal 8x minus 10. How do you know? You don't know what x is. There's a number out there that when I put it in here and here, this side length will have the same value as this one. And we could sit here all day and hope we get lucky and just start plugging in a bunch of numbers and doing guess and check. Let's try 2. 6 times 2 is 12. 8 times 2 is 16 minus 10. Oh, that's what? Six. So twelve something. Let's try three. Let's try this. No, let's not try anything. Let's use algebra. Okay? So by the time you're done guessing and checking, we could have set up an equation. But I'm going to ask you to think about this for a second. What equation do I set up? What equation do I set up? Hint, hint. What's the first thing you learn about squares? All four sides are the same, which means they have to equal each other. So, Kaden, what is my equation? Oh, it's going to be 8x minus 10 is equal to 6x. It sure is. So do you agree, because it's a square, that this side length is going to equal this side length? Regardless of what we figure out x is, they have to be the same. So now we have an equation with variables on both sides. So I'm going to just, now, I'm really glad he said it this way. We really like to have our x's on the left, but I'm not going to subtract 6 and then add 10 both sides. That means two steps. I'm just going to subtract that 8x and get it over there in one step. I'm going to cut my amount of work in half. So what? Wah, wah, we have our variable on the right. We can get used to that. So when I divide both sides by negative 2, I figure out that the side length is 5, which you know what? We may have eventually gotten around to figuring out it was five, okay? And I think I actually even heard a couple kids say five, but you know. But guess what? Hold on. Am I done? No. no. no they said find the perimeter. Be careful. There's a hidden step in here. Somebody just said take five, plug it in, multiply it by four here. No. What is the length of one side? Either six times x or 8x minus 10. So the side length of one side is what? 30. How did he get 30? Because x is 5, not the side length. So I take this x and I put it here. And I say, well, if x is 5, then this side length is 30. Should I really need to do it for all the other sides? Do I maybe want to just to check? So what's 8 times 5? What's 40 minus 10? 30. All right, they both worked out to be 30. So if one side length is 30, then the whole perimeter must be 120. Are you with me? OK, got it? All right, why don't you try this one? One second, Jada. 3x plus 6 and 5x. Find the perimeter. Go.
Yes, thank you. Of the square. Very good. I know, I could have pulled like a sweet trick over on you because it sure doesn't look like a square. No, sorry. Looks like a, I don't know. So I found the value of x. I'm going to put it here, multiply by 5 to get 15. I'm just going to double check to make sure this is 15. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 plus 6 is also 15. So the perimeter of this square is 60. OK? So how are your perimeter problems? Good? OK, because I have one um, 